Yeah, if it's smoke, then we airing out. Seen a couple mountains move when the faith was paramount. Heard they took the name, thought it wouldn't be the same, but thankfully there's only one name that we care about. Jesus, man, his flow is the cleanest. Some will call it a new What's up, fam? Welcome back to the Time Is Right podcast. My name is Scott Smith, and it is setting the stage. Season three. <sighs> Woo! Dang, we're really on season three. That voice is Jared Todd Moses, ladies and gentlemen. You already know you that. You know who I am. We are three seasons in, guys. Well, two seasons fully in. This is the beginning of season three. Uh, Time is Rep is a podcast of rep creators. We're a ministry based in the great city of Philadelphia. This is the podcast where we go back in time to discuss things that happened in our rep community. Uh, but today is setting the stage again for the third time. So our third time doing this, this is how we start every season. Jared and I sit down and have a conversation. Jared, how you feeling today? I'm feeling good, man. The fact that it's season three, like seriously, like that means we've done, this is our third year of doing this podcast, man. And it doesn't feel like it. It feels like we've been doing this podcast forever and like only for a month or two at the same time. That's a fact. That's a fact. <laughs> yeah, it's technically... Probably only, it's been under two years of us recording, I think. Yeah, but talking about three years, three years worth, worth of, of stuff, events. Yeah, yeah, which is pretty cool. Um, we started this podcast all the way back in 2022, and we first episode was about good soil in season one, and then we ran through all of those events, and then season two started whenever we started talking about January 2023, so we've done 12 months worth of events now granted there's like 50 episodes we didn't record yeah there's plenty of events that we didn't get to touch a lot of stuff we didn't even do episodes about yeah (laughs) but we ended up right around 20 episodes for season two which is amazing that we did more than you know one a month like on average there were some months where we did two or three in the same month um pretty awesome i think we're you know up into the mid 30s total number of episodes yeah. Already, which is super cool as well. Um, we probably got to do something like special for episode 50 or something at some point. I don't know. Uh, but Jarrett, shout out to you, man, for uh, helping us get all these things done. You know, time is right. I've said this on every setting the stage. I say it on a decent chunk of episodes, but it bears repeating. Uh, time is right, but just an idea if it's only me. It would not exist without you. So thank you so much for recording every episode, showing up, no matter where we're recording it. We record a bunch of different places, yeah. right? Like showing up, bringing the microphones, bringing the cables, bringing the computer, you know, recording all the stems, going in, editing all the stems, creating the final product, bouncing it, sending it to YouTube, uploading it to Apple and Spotify and everywhere else. Like, thank you so much for producing this thing, for releasing this thing. It doesn't happen without you, Jared Todd Mount Moses. So we appreciate you. I love doing it. That's all we get. <laughs> no, it's just I love doing it. it. It's it's hard to expand on something when it feels like it's just a natural part of your your life and a natural part of what you got going on. It's you don't really think too much about it. You don't really think too much about doing it because it just feels like you're supposed to. Yeah, that's that's real, man. It's definitely felt like a a natural overflow of our friendship and our relationship. Yeah. Um, but also of the ripe community as a whole. Um, we've gotten to have so many different voices on season two and so many great conversations about different events that we got to be a part of. Um, also just want to shout out the ripe creatives YouTube channel as well. If you realize this or not, Jared also does all that stuff as well. Um, so our YouTube has grown to over a thousand subscribers. Woo! Shout out to us. Oh, that's taking forever, but I'm so proud of that channel right now. <laughs> It's doing well, man. Shout out to Peter Collins carrying the uh, <laughs> carrying the ripe, ripe creatives YouTube. <laughs> Our friend Peter Collins is a phenomenal artist. He's done a couple of shows with us, and his videos are performing quite well on that channel. The so. best out of everything we got. Shout out to Peter. Um, now, Jared, before we uh, talk about maybe season three and the look ahead. I've loved that we've done this, uh, you know, in our setting the stages. We've talked about what's come before mm-hmm. and do like a little bit of a look back. So we already did one, a look back on season one. Let's do a look back on season two. 20 plus episodes, 20-ish episodes. What are some of your favorites? Now, here I'll give the overview 
and then we can go back and forth. We can have a little debate here. <laughs> um, we did two poetry episodes, Bus Boys in Two Lines, in the early part of the year. Mm-hmm. We had six creatives episodes. So we did, you know, about a dozen creatives events. Six of those became episodes, three galleries, two co bills, one open mic episode. We did six conference episodes, uh, Renew Breakaway Movement Day, All Access, Extend and Ignite. Uh, two festivals, Worship Fest, of course, and FOF Fest as mm. well. We did the Penn State show. We did the Brickyard show. I think that's the full 20 episodes. So a lot of variety here. Yeah. But I think what's interesting is season one, we did a lot of festival episodes. Remember, there's like five festivals. This year yeah. was like the year of the conference, you know, because <laughs> we had like so many conferences that we did this year. Right. But also, you know, six creatives, two poetry, two festivals, the Penn State show, Back in Brickyard. What are your favorites? And I'll argue with you if I need to. <laughs> so, um, I mean, everyone's favorite is always going to be one that they are personally connected to, so they're normally on it. But uh, I really loved Creatives Always Has a Special Place in My Heart. Anything in Ripe, like Creatives, how I got started, anytime we talk about Creatives, I'm excited and I'm happy. Uh, Leah Wren's co episode just... I just loved that one because that was a lot of fun to talk with her about it and and get Leah on the podcast, hear her heart. The four of us, like it was you, me, Emily, and Leah, just talking through everything on the event. Um, the FOF Fest one was a lot of fun just because getting to get Doc and Sean on here was a lot of fun. Both of them have personalities that are great to have conversations with. So not even just being on the episode, but just listening. It was engaging in a different way than some of the episodes that we've had. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, F- FOF is definitely on my list. Yeah. For sure. Shout out to Sean Prez, Doc Hero. We got to share the uh, pants splitting story with Sean Prez. <laughs> yes, yes, we did. That that uh, was really funny. <laughs> it's like It was just a really good episode. It was a very long episode, but it was yeah. really good. And we gave a lot of flowers to a lot of people. We talked about Unwanted at length on that. ARAM, um, our artist, Tamir Abel, Rick Harmony. You know, a bunch of people that we know and then other people that we've gotten to know a little bit along the journey. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we got to spend the the last majority of that episode talking about Doc's set, which yeah. he's just like one of the best performers you're ever going to see. And so getting to break down like even the funny candle story and all that kind of stuff. Yep. <laughs> like if you haven't listened to FOFS, you got to go back and check that one out. I hadn't really thought about Leah's that way, but I... Yeah, you're right. Leah's was a great episode. It was. And it was an excuse to get Leah Wren on a podcast because you're never going to get her into this room yeah. to record because she is not a fan of being on a microphone very much. And that's actually something we we had discussed when we were thinking about the episode. We're like, is is this even going to get anything out of her? <laughs> <laughs> Leah, we love you. Um, we brought in Emily to be her, uh, like... Her you know liaison. How pe- yeah, you know how people have, like, their uh, their puppy support, you know? they have the support like, animal. <laughs> support animal. <laughs> Emily was the support animal, animal on the co-bill. <laughs> it's a fact, though. <laughs> she needed it. It was a great episode. Emily shared a lot of good stuff, but honestly, Leah Wren shared a ton of beautiful things. Yeah. We got to hear her say, and we recorded it, so it's canonized forever, that she enjoyed the show. Yeah. She, she enjoyed being on stage. She enjoyed being on stage. It's crazy. I mean, that that hearing that statement from her voice is worth going back and checking out that episode. Mm-hmm. Um, the gallery episodes were great. Yeah. We had Devin... We had Isaac, Isaac and Santos. And, yep. All three really great listens. Um, shout out to those. I will say my personal favorites, and this is biased for sure. Yeah. But re, um, the uh, the two poetry episodes. Of course. The Bus Boys episode, that was our first time having AVG on and Greg together. Mm-hmm. Um, where we got to share about that story of us going down to support Jayla, who is now officially a right poet with us. So that even predates like her officially joining the team. Um, And then the Two Lines episode with Sir Gene for the first time. Yeah, that was the first time. Well, now that we got Jayla, but like that was the first time all the poets were on before she had officially joined. Yeah, so it was all four of us. Jayla is now the fifth. But that Two Lines episode is really good. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe more than most... It was less about the story of what happened and more about the heartbeat and philosophy of our ministry yeah. and like being kingdom artists in secular spaces all the time. 
how we navigate that, why we do that that way, and some of the outcomes of doing things in that way, Mm -hmm. um, which I just think is like a really good, valuable conversation for anybody to hear whether they know us or not. Um, So yeah, those were really good. Uh, Any other ones like stick out? I mean, it's always fun talking about anything with Jonathan Curtis. Like being, being on worship <laughs> fest like that man is is his personality he's a quiet person but he's also not that quiet as a person <laughs> yeah he's a talker he's a talker when you get him in the right circumstance <laughs> yeah that's a fact yeah he can go a mile a minute um in talking about worship fest another long episode similar to fof but it's just because there's so much to talk about there's so much in the story of it to to unpack and yeah. share about I mean, it's our biggest, it was our biggest event of last year. Yeah. Huge undertaking. Um, and that episode is really unique in the sense that the event didn't go super well. No. Right? Like we, no, it, we it were in not. a hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't like, man, look at us. Look at how everything went so well. It was more like these. this was a struggle for these reasons. How do we try to overcome those challenges? What do we learn from those challenges? Was God still good throughout? Yeah, absolutely. But definitely a complicated episode yeah. because there was a heck of a lot of stuff to break down. But that that's all part of the, the heart of why we do Time is Right because we're here to explain when there is something to be explained, when there's something to share, when there's something to use as a testimony. And the testimonies don't always come from the best, the most perfect events. Like we have plenty of events that we do where they're smooth, no issues, like perfectly run event, but it just doesn't feel like there's anything to share about that we'll skip. Like we skipped, I don't know how many open mics, like we didn't talk about half the open mics we did last year. Yeah, but they way, went way really more than well. half. Yeah, yeah, almost all but one. We only talked about one. But it, but it's good the to whole sh- year. But it's good to share when you're in the hilltop, when you're in the valley, when you're at high points and low points. Like you need to share as a ministry because it's too easy to think like, oh, that ministry is doing so perfectly. Like they they don't do anything wrong. Why is mine going terribly? We don't all go perfectly. We're not all going super smooth. We all have our rough points. Absolutely. Yeah, Worship Fest was a good episode. Um, I liked Back in Brickyard, too. Yeah. Luke, and uh, for the first time, we had his wife, Allison Billman, Mm -hmm. on the podcast. It was her first time ever being on a podcast. Shout out to Allison. Stepping out, doing new things. She was great. Mm -hmm. She had a lot of great things to share on that episode. Um, And the Penn State show was kind of fun, too. We had, you know, Rashid on that one. I think we had AVG on it as well, sharing on behalf of the poets. Just a really great episode, and you yeah. got to you got to I think flex a little bit of your voice on the Penn State show because you did a lot of the heavy lifting for the Penn State show. Yeah, that was that was a big event, especially on my side because that was like a, a creatives peer event where we're setting up from scratch, but with a lot less time. Yeah, and in a space we had never been in before. Yep. While overcoming challenges with the university settings and stuff, and mm-hmm. and trying to do that as well as we possibly could in relationship with them, so yeah, and those great, challenges were really just scheduling. <laughs> it was a good episode. I mean, all of them were were super good. I, I yeah. uh, appreciated the extend one as well. We got on on who is the newest addition as of the recording of this podcast on, to on. the ripe artists, and um, we had on on, <laughs> and uh, yeah, extend episode was really great. Um, movement day with Emily Davis from PGM, great conversations. You know, I think, I think that's, that's actually one of the coolest things about season two was how many new voices we had on the new or old voices, but they were outside of ripe. Yes. Like not necessarily a ripe artist or part of ripe worship or a ripe poet, but people that we partner with. Mm Mm-hmm that are like adjacent to Ripe would be like, oh, I love Ripe. I'm in their corner. And we've already named a lot of them, but just to like rename them in a grouping, Doc Hero was on, Sean Prez was on, Emily Davis was on, Luke and Allison Billman and Jonathan Curtis. So, I mean, that's like a half a dozen guests. And that's not even going into all of the gallery artists. Like none of them are specifically ripe connected they they become ripe adjacent once they they do those galleries and they'll be parts of the communities but it's fun seeing us pour into people that aren't part of the community directly yeah. and just seeing them come alongside because they love what we do yeah if you include those three gallery episodes which is totally fair to do that more than half of the episodes featured people not in right mm-hmm. 
which is awesome. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's really, really cool. Um, we also had new guests within Ripe mm-hmm. as well. So Sergene, as I mentioned, Greg and AVG, um, Joe Novalis. We finally got JoJo on a podcast. Uh, he joined on uh, for Extend. And then we also had Jason Weatherby for the Ignite Conference yeah. as a drummer boy. And we also had Raffy Taffy. Raffy Taffy! Rafael Acera on the retreat episode, which was super unique. My guy. That was a great episode. That was a fun episode just because it, it, we went over to my house and it felt like more like we were hanging out than actually talking about the episode. <laughs> yeah, probably not the cleanest episode. No, not at all. In terms of delivery, you know, it's like... Not, but it shows what it's like when the three of us are hanging out. Yeah, we, <laughs> rap versus like more activities <laughs> like just out of nowhere you're like Raph what are you talking about but his brain is just one of one um Raph Jared and I had a great time on the uh retreat episode it was also a different episode let's be transparent it was our first time not talking about an event mm-hmm. as much as like a gathering because the retreat wasn't an event it was a yeah it was a working retreat we we're breaking down what we were talking about what we were after as a community um so it was just like you know a different episode than then the lights came on, and this artist walked out on stage, and they did this, and it was amazing. It was a lot more free-flowing of yeah. a conversation. Because we always talk about how we're outpouring to other people. That was kind of a chance to see us pouring back into ourselves and doing a recharge as a community, yep. which we have plenty of those points throughout the year. It's just we haven't felt like they were necessary to share about. Absolutely. And then we also had a bunch of voices within our ripe community that were returners. Mm-hmm. Um, Abel was on again in season two. Shout out to Abel. He's on quite a few episodes. Uh, we finally got our boy Rashid back for the Penn State show. Um, he also did another episode with his us Kobo. for his concert, for his co Which was another good episode. Great episode as well. Um, Ricardo Labastida, Rick Harmony, hey. our Texas Rick. Um, he was on uh, a few episodes in season two. Um, including Renew and Breakaway, yeah. Um, the two conference episodes back in March of 2023. And then Demir was on a bunch of episodes. Demir. He was on All Access. He was on Ignite. He was on a bunch of different ones. Mm-hmm. Eves was also on a few. Um, shout out to Eves, who got married. Eves Love had her. a busy year this year. <laughs> she was going through craziness this year. She got <laughs> married and is married. <laughs> it's a big thing to go through in All year. while gigging. <laughs> All while doing a bunch of conferences and gigs. Um, of course, we had Emily Phillips back on a bunch of episodes. She was on every gallery episode, but also on some others as well. And then uh, DJ Angie. Love the man. Our favorite person in the whole wide Our world. Our favorite DJ. Our favorite human. <laughs> Forget DJ. Um, DJ Angie is the GOAT, and we appreciate him a ton. So a lot of new people, a lot of people who were on multiple seasons already. Um, really great to have more voices both inside and outside of our community on season two. And hopefully we're going to see a lot of them again because, like, I mean, season three, we just want to grow the community. We're not trying to. We're not trying to get smaller. We're not trying to cut everything off <laughs> we we got all these people and i'm i'm excited to see them come back with new stories new growth and i'm excited to see who's new that we have on this year because mm-hmm. there's so many people last year that i would never would have thought we would have had on episodes but Facts. we did and yeah. i'm wondering who is it that's going to be on this year Ooh, that we didn't last year that's a good question I mean, we can't give it away, No, nah. but we definitely have some ideas. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I think even like the Jason one last year yeah. was really special, right? Because Jason is a drummer in our community. He drums for creatives quite a bit. Um, he also drums for Ripe Worship quite a bit. Mm-hmm. And then he drums for Demir and Abel quite a bit on gigs. Yeah. So he has been a guy in the background drumming in all of these different settings, growing in our community a ton. One of my favorite moments of all of 2023 ripe was when everybody was beating me up, like to have more faith because I was doubting on some <laughs> stuff. And Jason like became Pastor Jason and just started like yelling at me in this room. It was pretty awesome. <laughs> um, but he's like grown up a ton in his faith in the last year, which has been super beautiful to witness. Mm-hmm. But we we were strategic. Like this is an opportunity to get Jason on an episode. Yeah. Let's do it. And I think that's like where our mindset has been for season three. 
Because we want everyone to be heard because we don't know what stories they haven't told that they bring up on the podcast. Absolutely. Because there was stuff that Jason talked about that we never would have known if he hadn't been on that episode. Yep. And not just about Ignite, but even his own story and his own like ways that he has felt a desire to grow as a drummer and all that stuff. Like We talked about the Penn State show yeah. through the lens of Jason's own voice on the Ignite podcast because it's it's a through line, right? Mm-hmm. Jason wasn't on the Penn State episode but we got to talk about it again with him on ignite yeah and i think that's gonna just kind of happen you know as much as we want to be narrow focused on one event one day it's all interwoven together because that's the story that god's writing they all affect each other every event leads to the next one right and the growth that we experience at one is going to lead us to be better at the next so yeah um stuff like that moments where it's like all right how do we get mike weatherby on to an episode you know, oh, can we get Liv on this one because she performed here? Like, who can we get to do which episodes? Um, I just think is like a strategy on what events we decide to even do episodes about. Yeah. There there were some episodes that we we were like, oh, let's not even do one about this event. And we're like, oh, but we could get we could get that one person who's never been on before. And it ends up being an amazing episode. Shout out to the things working out the way that they should. <laughs> um, super, super excited for season three. Jared, what are you most excited about for season three? I mean, we we did some repeat episodes in season two uh, from season one where we're talking about things like... Uh, uh, back in Brickyard. Back in Brickyard or talking about Worship Fest or or just just different events that we've done before and we got called back to because we did them well. I'm excited to see those if they happen again, if we get replacement events that we're coming into and getting to talk about. I'm it's just an excitement to see the future because I looked back through some of the episodes and I'm like, that was this year. That was this past year. I thought this was like two years ago at this point. Mm. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it's crazy how time works in this whole world. Yeah. In general, but I think within ripe especially because we have a lot going on. And it can be easy to like just think, oh, yeah, that was two years ago. And it's like, no, that was 10 months ago or that was yeah. three months ago. And you're like, wait, but we did this, 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 and this after that. How's that possible that that was three months ago? That was me like two hours ago when I saw that Penn State was in season two. I was like, wait, I thought that was season one. <laughs> no, it's March. Yeah. Right? It was a March show, yeah. 2023. So, yeah, it was definitely season two. Um, yeah, I think. I will I will say this. I am most excited about what I already know is coming. Yeah. Which is the next few episodes. We can make an allusion to it. I mean, I think, I mean, I we, mean don't, we don't like to talk about the future, but like we know these are happening. We know the first three episodes of season three are the right poetry tour. Scott, Scott loves the ones about the poets because it's one that affects him directly because it's something he loves so much. And, and next three episodes are all focused on that and the endeavors they took to take a huge step of faith and a huge step of investment in themselves. I don't think there's a single person who could say it didn't pay off. Yeah, it was definitely a valuable, valuable trip and experience. And uh, yeah, the first three episodes, we thought it was going to be one. Then we thought, okay, I knew it it's going to be, be two. two. <laughs> and then we were in the room recording. And when that hour came up at the end of episode two or 45 minute mark or whatever, I was like, we're never this finishing this. This is not this. three. This is not two. This is going to be three. <laughs> so we ended up splitting up into three separate episodes. So they'll release one after another. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited for that. I'm also, you know, genuinely really excited to see what new voices, both within Ripe. And also without, like, on the outside of, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I think as our relationship with, like, a Philadelphia gospel movement grows, right? Like, what does it look like to have a Pastor Terry on the podcast? Mm -hmm. You know, as we do more stuff in relationship with City Reach Church, what does it look like to get Wanda or Mark Novalis on the podcast with us sometime? You know, Ernie. Like, we talk Mm. about Ernie every four episodes, you know, because he's meant a lot to our community. What does it look like to get his voice on here because we did an event at Christ Community again? You know, mm-hmm. like, I th- I think that could be really fun for this to never get um, dull is like to constantly bring new people on. It's definitely not going to be repetitive because even when we do an event a second time, there is something new that we're going to try out. That's a fact. Yeah, I think um, 
one of the funny things, Jared, that we we had said on the last setting the stage episode. This is oh. like switching gears a little bit, but I still think it's like worth saying. We had a goal to get caught up. Uh-huh. And if you remember, we did for a short amount of time. Uh-huh. <laughs> what happened was the summer though, because summer was gig season. Yeah. And we were on the road so much, either on your end for either your own I was gone stuff. and you were home or you were home and yeah, whatever. Yeah, I was gone on a lot of gigs. Artists were booked for a lot of stuff. We were on the road like all summer, which was, you know, not a surprise, but we couldn't keep up with the episodes that we wanted to do in the summer. We ended up skipping a ton of summer episodes. Yeah, I was going to say, we tried to do like a compilation episode and we're looking at it and I'm like, this is... This isn't what we said we were doing this podcast for. We're not. We're yeah, not doing a we actually, big. We deleted clump. an episode. Yeah, I forgot we did that. Yeah, we sat down to try and talk about like ten different events, and I'm like, this, this what? isn't, this isn't what we do. <laughs> yeah, it did not work at all. It was, I mean, yeah, we tried. We because we we're trying to get caught back up, and we gotten so behind. Yeah, that it was like let's try to do you know ten events in one, and just like touch base on each one. And we realized it just wasn't going to work. And so we ended up scrapping that episode, even though we recorded the whole thing, edited the whole thing, we scrapped it. Yeah, we and did edit the whole thing. Yeah, we did. That was, I think at the end, that was almost like an hour long episode too. That was a long edit. Yeah, it was terrible. So we scrapped that whole episode. And then out of those 10 events, we probably only ended up doing one or two actual episodes out of that. Maybe four? It wasn't know. many. It wasn't many. It wasn't many. But then we fell behind again. Yes. Life be um, life in. Life be life in. A lot of stuff on the personal front with me and my wife going through some stuff. And yeah. so we're finally, finally, <laughs> we can't make this promise. I, season I refuse three, to make any promises again. <laughs> season three, we're hoping to get caught back up. We don't know if we will. But we, the goal is to be able to shoot an episode in real time. Yep. Like right after an event and release it the following Monday. Um, so that, you know, like conversations are about seven days ago, 15 days ago for people who listen to it right away. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, whatever happens, happens. I, you know, I love that we don't have like a standard of we always release every first Monday or we always, you know, like th- that stuff would kill us because we don't have the capacity to do that. No. We can only record when we can record. And I think that's part of what's made this. No episode has been like worthless because no. we're never putting an episode together that didn't need to happen. Right. We're not. We're not forcing anything. There's no content for the sake of content. It's it's content for the sake of the story. Absolutely. I think we've. I think we've stayed true to that, which I'm very proud 100%. of. Hundred percent. Season three. There's a possibility that we might no actually have a dedicated space. To record our podcast in. Just maybe. Just maybe. Related to some other way bigger things we're not going to talk about. No. But it's possible that the time is ripe might actually have a room where we always go to record. And there's a chance in all of that that there just might be a possibility that there will be a video. There might be a video? There might be a video. It's possible. It might not be for a while. We don't know. Yeah. But there's a strong possibility by maybe episode 50, you know, Ooh. that we have the first ever Time is Ripe video podcast of us in a space. I mean, that's that's saying a lot. I don't know if that's going to happen. I don't know, man. But by, it's by 50? By 50, by 50, though, 50 might be the end of uh, 2024. So that's a good amount of time. That's true. That's true. Because that's, right. that's about 20 episodes. Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. I don't, I'm just saying there's a possibility. <laughs> no promises being made, but we might have a room that we can say, hey, we're shooting a podcast at the Ripe Creatives podcast studio per se, right? Yep. And meet us here. We're going to record an episode, which for us would just be an absolute game changer in terms of maybe some of the quality mm-hmm. and uh, because we wouldn't be shooting like, at 10 or 11 o'clock at night, potentially. We could right. record earlier in the day. People will be awake. <laughs> yeah. People like AVG won't be half asleep while he's uh, sharing his stories. No, just we love you. <laughs> we love you, AVG. Um, but yeah, like I think we're going to get a better quality of quote-unquote product, even though this isn't a product, Yeah, by 
by having a space that we can go to to record. Yeah. And the potential of maybe we actually make this studio space thing, this room where we record these podcasts, look a certain way that might be aesthetically pleasing enough for there to be video, which would create the opportunity to share content related to the podcast. Ooh. For more people to learn about the podcast. Who knows? Who, Who knows? knows? We're just saying. We're just saying. We're dreamers. <laughs> it's definitely not in our hands, but it's it, there's some exciting stuff happening there. Um, any any other big things for season three on your front? A lot of hope of seeing growth that's coming this year. Like you said, there's so many fronts and so many ways we could be given opportunities that we want to share about and we're just trusting that God's going to give us what it is we're supposed to have to share about. It's good. It's a good way to put it, Jared. Yeah. There's a lot happening within our community, not just in terms of like a space to record podcasts. That's very small in comparison to the larger narratives of what's potentially ahead for us. Yeah. But even like shout out to the artists, right? We saw tremendous growth yeah. in 2023 for a lot of them. And we added a few, right? So like currently I think there's 17 acts in Ripe that are like on stage artists kind of people, um, which is kind of insane to say that. Like if you include ever so Rashid and Liv as separate entities, I think it is eight, I think it's 18 with Rosie and Ant. Um our website will be able to tell you whenever our new website drops too. So that's another thing, like new website, a whole bunch of growth in terms of the roster that's in right. And I will say this about our roster. You never know what the follow through is going to be with artists, right? Because yeah. <laughs> being an artist is being a creative, being a procrastinator is a part of that. And our follow through isn't always the greatest. But there's talk of about nine to 11 collections of work albums or EPs being created within just the music artist side of Ripe Creatives right now. Yeah. So theoretically, there's like 40 to 50 songs that are going to land in the world this year from our community. Hopefully. Potentially. Hopefully. Potentially. Hopefully, potentially. But I think that even, what is the growth from those sounds, from those songs that are released? How do the artists grow? which ultimately leads to more opportunities for them, Mm -hmm. for us to have conversations about even more significant opportunities that they've gotten to receive in 2024. Like what conversation are we having with a Rashid about where he got to perform that wasn't even on our radar 12 months ago? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that's what I'm most excited for is what we don't know is coming. The joy of the unknown. The joy of the unknown. Normally you say the fear of the unknown, but now we got the joy of it. (laughs) It's a lot heading our direction potentially, y'all. It has been a joy and an honor uh, to do this. You know, we started this podcast in part because we knew we needed to do a better job of communicating with our partners and supporters about what we actually have going on as a ministry. And um, I think we've done that. Yeah. You know, I think from the people that I've heard from directly saying that they listen to this thing, it has meant a lot to them to know where their resources are going Mm -hmm. in a conversational kind of way that beats out a paragraph on a newsletter. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's kind of been our heart from day one is like, there's too much to put on a piece of paper. Yeah. You know, what can we... We there, we have to show you it, and video won't even do. You know, like a video clip from a show will give you some part of it. It'll show you the performance. It won't show you the the fallout after the performance of who all it affected. Yes, the heart of the why they were even performing that thing in the first place. That deeper moment is what we get to experience all the time, which is what gives us the energy to keep going. Yeah. But so many people have been unexposed to that stuff. So that's kind of been the heart of even doing this podcast. I think that happened in season two. 
Um, we had a big uptick in the number of people listening. So shout out to you listeners. Mm-hmm. Um, thank you guys for joining us on the journey. And uh, yeah, I'm super excited for season three, man. Like you said, it's been an honor and a pleasure doing this. It's been an honor and pleasure doing this with you. Because as much as this helps the supporters learn about what we do, we get to learn more about each other doing it. We get to learn more about how we felt in moments, how stuff affects us in ways that we don't always get to talk about. Yeah. So thank you for being here and helping us all pull these reactions and experiences out of ourselves. Because yeah. we always need to revisit the good times and the bad times. And and this is a way to do it. No, that's, that's good. I forget who said it. It's the unexamined life. Is mm. not worth living. I forget whose quote that is. Mm. But you could have said you. I've never heard that. <laughs> no, it's, it's definitely not my quote. Uh, but it's it's a good it's a good quote. You know, like this forces us to examine what we're experiencing. Yeah. And how things went. What could have been better? What was great? What did we learn from it? Who do we connect to? This is and like a it's like a diary of ripe. It is. So it's, it's a digital journal. <laughs> for Ripe Creatives. So thank you for joining us in this journey. Season three. Thank you. Ahead is going to be amazing. Listen, season two was great. If you're here just starting your journey, go back, listen to some stuff. I think it all provides context for where we are and where we're headed. Um, You know, check out the setting the stage episodes one and two. Give you an (laughs) idea of what we've actually lived up to. and what we've Hear how much we've grown from those. (laughs) Yeah, go back and listen and hold us accountable on all the things we didn't accomplish yet. <laughs> um, but no, we have accomplished a lot already, and it's it's been a joy. So um, thank you guys for those of you who are here and you yes. partner with us. Uh, your support enables us to do this podcast, for one, but deeper than that is every event that we're talking about is only possible because of your generosity and support. Um, even things like our Ripe Retreat, which wasn't an event, but still something that needed funding, you mm-hmm. know, in order to do that. So your generosity is what allowed us to go on our first ever overnight ripe retreat in 2023. Want to do that again in 2024, have plans to, we need your support to do that kind of stuff. So if you're here and you don't currently partner with us, highly encourage you to jump on our website, ripecreatives.com and consider partnering with us, consider giving, um, your resources literally cover the cost of platforming a podcast, right? Yeah. And recording a podcast and editing a podcast, right? Like, but deeper than that, it's everything else that we do that we're talking about on each episode. It's only possible because of people giving uh, to support us as a ministry here in the city. So, I uh, highly encourage you to do that. Consider doing that. Consider doing that monthly, you know, <laughs> whatever capacity, frequency, or, or level you can. It all means a lot for us to, to continue the work of Ripe Creatives. And as Jared has alluded to, I think 2024 is a year. A lot of things are going to happen this year that are dreams we've had for years. Mm. And we're super, super excited to un- unfold those things, share those stories as they become realities. Um, this feels like our year in a way that I, I don't know if I could have said before 2024. Like This feels like a really, really valuable year for what we have for the next five, 10 years as a ministry. Even like in the past couple of weeks before recording this episode, I don't know if we could have said it. Yeah, there's a lot happening, guys. <laughs> there's a lot happening and a lot happening fast. <laughs> yep. So keep us in prayer too, for real, for real. Please. Um, we pray going into all these episodes that it would reach exactly the people that we it's supposed to reach. And um, so, so if you're if hearing we, this, we prayed for you. Yeah, we did. We need your prayer for us. Please. Um, we need a lot of Please. prayer right now for uh, everything that's about to transpire. So um, we love y'all. Thank you for tuning in. Setting the stage. Part three. Season three is on its way, y'all. We're technically in it right now. <laughs> and uh, we hope you enjoy the next few episodes, especially because we already know what's coming. Yes. Until that time. Until next time, y'all. Stay right. Joker. Yeah, I'm a fight into these wolves. If we talk, Minnesota was dropping jewels. We Realize I'm at a table with Cobras, they send shots, send them back I prefer being sober, that sin was cardinal I need my diamond back, Arizona Yeah, tell me what the difference is A lot of y'all see churches